Hi, my name is Jesse at Trash Panda, and as disc golfers, we all know that the same disc can vary from run to run. But when you think about it, that's kind of insane, right? Because every single disc is being made in the exact same steel mold. So, like, shouldn't they end up being the exact same? Well, the other day, we decided to spend the whole day pushing the limits to see what we could figure out. So we started with one type of plastic and messed with pressure and temperature, and then decided to try an entirely different plastic because we wanted to see if we could make two discs that fly completely different out of the exact same mold. And spoiler alert, it went way better than we thought it would. So the entire reason I wanted to make this video and do this test was because of something that happened when we made the ozone. And I haven't actually talked about this before because it was almost like a happy accident. But the truth is the ozone wasn't the disc that we designed. That's really too dramatic of a way to say it. But all I'm trying to say is that what we designed in 3D on the computer in CAD and the final product that we got in our hands they were two very different things. So if you know the Ozone, it is a flippy, domey fairway driver. What we were going for with the Ozone was a flatter, more neutral fairway driver. So what the heck? Basically, as far as I could tell, the problem was with shrink. If you didn't already know, all plastics shrink when they cool. And some plastics, if that wasn't complicated enough, shrink more than others. So as far as I could tell, we'd accounted for the shrink in the mold as we always have with just the general volume and size, but we hadn't quite accounted for that shrink to turn into dome. But that's also not where it stops because apparently when injection molding, you can manipulate certain parameters, temperatures, things to make a disc more or less domey. By the way, if you're confused, just know we're on the same page here. I am as well. Making discs is so complicated and we're learning this one together. Now I do wanna make sure that I say it was a happy accident because I love the Ozone. I love it for the slot that it fills and so many people are finding so much success with this disc. But at least today, I wanna to push the limits with the machine and see just how much we can learn. Boom, ready to go. All right, Kyle, should we go up in pressure? Yahoo! So Kyle, what do we what do we actually want to try today? I mean, the first couple things that come to mind are injection rate, so how fast or slow it's like going into pressure. the mold. Yeah, uh, the pressure. So we were at 1050 PSI, now we're at 1200. So we bumped it up a little bit. We might even go up from there, but see what this is looking like. <laughs> Okay, this is not what we expected. We were expecting way more flashing around the edge. Okay, here's 1350. You can see flashing all over the place, kind of crazy. 1500 PSI. This one has more flash. Still looking pretty good. Very curious how it's gonna look when it's cooked. All right, the pressure is now 1750 instead of 1500. It looks the same. Say something. <laughs> it looks the same. I didn't know what was happening. So one of the issues here is the disc comes off the machine and it looks good, but we still have to let it cool for a full table to see what ends up happening. Quick interjection because it actually goes a little bit further than just waiting for a full table. So yes, once the disc comes out, it's super hot. You let it cool on a table and then you still have to let it set for another 24 hours because what the discs look like after 24 hours still can change. For example, we've seen discs day one looking great, but then being warped on day two or something like that. So through the whole test, yes, we're taking notes and kind of gathering data, but the full blown conclusions will actually come towards the end of the video when I took the discs out to a field and threw them after 36 hours. Ah, look the same? It, yeah, it looks identical. We're up at 2000 but we've noticed that every injection has been 5.8. Watch. I bet it doesn't do it on this one. 
boom, boom, 5.8. Every single time it's been 5.8, this is capped out. So this is really not doing too much. I think we're gonna try changing the velocity now. Any idea what'll happen? I have no idea, but there's probably an equation somewhere that would be helpful. So it just injected, yes. and we don't know what we're gonna see, but it definitely went quicker than yes. 5.8 because it was four and it almost bottomed out. The screw almost it got bottomed really out close. Too. Yeah, so. I'm what, gonna watch that. What do you think we're gonna see? Uh, I think we're gonna see flash galore, but. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the craziest flash we've seen today. This disc is where we got to with like the highest injection pressure. And as you can see, lots of dome going on. Higher injection pressure equals more domey question mark. That's where we're at at the moment. Let's try it out. So we don't want to say any conclusions yet, but the way these are coming off at a lower injection is just board flat. We'll see once they cool, obviously. They still have some shrink left in them, surely. So that was speed and pressure. And now we're gonna move over to temperature. See what we can do. They're coming off the same, board flat. And what we're dealing with now with temperature is the fact that something is happening in the barrel where like as it's melting the plastic maybe i don't i'm not going to say this the right way or scientifically but basically the plastic is like pulling apart and then as it cools it shrinks down that's just the visual that i have in my head so hypothetically yes these are coming off looking the same but something different is happening in that pull apart shrink down maybe they're pulling apart less maybe they're pulling apart more and that's what we're testing right now. So we should see after a full table. Who knows? You can see it's just picking up so slowly. It's, uh, it's just so interesting to go from like injection, like injecting faster than we've ever injected. Like one, two, done. To now, the pickup being like super, super, super slow. And that just kind of shows you how complex injection molding is, right? Because we're trying one thing, we're trying another thing, but then if you start to compound those different things and do them together, and then you start to change other stuff too, all of a sudden you have infinite possibilities inside of one machine. When we're doing this, we have to like zoom out, try not to make it too complex, try this, try this, try this, work through the list and not overwhelm ourselves because mentally it is exhausting. If I could find So the good news is that everything is looking like an ozone, which leads to the bad news. Everything is looking like an ozone. So we've gone as low as we can go. We've gone as high as we can go. But right now, Kyle is reloading the process because we do have one more ace in the hole, possible cheat code, we'll see. And that is when plastic cools, it shrinks. And when it shrinks outside of the mold, it can shrink on its own wherever it wants to go. But what if it's shrinking inside of the mold and it has that limitation by way of the steel itself? So what if we let it shrink for an extra minute inside the mold? Do you think that'll even work? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know that when we first started running ozone, we came across dome early because the process was too fast. We needed to cool longer and it did help. But yeah. I've never gone to that extreme. Well, this is what we're here for because we have no idea. You have no idea. Unless if Dave McCormick's watching this video, he definitely knows. But the rest of us have no idea and we will see what happens.
really quickly, I know it's the middle of the test, but I wanted to let you know that in honor of World Ozone Day, which is today, and based on the feedback we got from the first run ozones, as well as some of the things we learned in this test, we just released a brand new blend of ozone. Basically what we did is we combined the two types of plastic used in this test and ended up with a slightly flatter and more flexible run of ozone. So we brought back a color we call X-ray, along with two new colors. You've got infrared and supernova. I also think it ended up being even more of a premium blend, which is exciting. I mean, seeing that all premium plastics out there are made with TPU, it's kind of weird calling it more of a premium blend, but there is variability in TPU, so I guess it makes sense. Actually, speaking of variability in TPU, let's get back to the test. Okay, so this last plastic we're gonna test, we're gonna test as a little bit of a blend, and then we're gonna test it 100%. And the reason I wanna test this is because we previously tested it in the dune mold, and it was probably the flattest dune we've ever made. A fun fact about this material, it actually came from Nike. Like this is recycled Nike plastic, which is insane. But enough talking, let's test a different recycled plastic. testing day for dome versus flat is officially over and 100% of the new one is by far the flattest ozone we've ever seen. Um, in fact, I would go so far as to say this would fly like probably a T-bird, maybe even more stable. Kyle, what do you think? Oh, it's definitely gonna be stable. I yeah. don't know how stable, but it looks like it's gonna just... It, it, it literally looks like a different disc, but uh, I'm hesitant to say anything today because we really need to see how these set over 24 hours. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's like 36 hours later, and to say this test was successful would be an understatement. This was, this went so well. Let me show you. So this is the master, and the first thing we tested was pressure. And it became incredibly obvious that the more pressure, the faster the plastic injects into the mold, the more dome. Just with this side-by-side -side alone, you can see how massive of a difference it was with the baseline process compared to an incredibly fast injection. So I think it's fair to say from the first test, more pressure, more speed equals more dome, and less pressure, less speed, the slower it injects means less dome. After that, we tried temperature. And to be honest with that one, we didn't see a ton of variability until we started to test cooling time in the mold. It was the moment we went from a 65-ish second cycle time to 115 second cycle time. By the way, cycle time is just how long it took to make the disc. So injection plus cooling time in the mold is your overall cycle. And seeing the difference between the 65 second cycle time and the 115 second cycle time was insane. Because clearly, this is a much flatter ozone. Saying much also feels like an understatement there. Like, this is pretty much what we designed. So here's the flight of the stock ozone versus the 115 second cycle time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, those are different discs. It's still an understable fairway, but it's like, it doesn't have minus three, it feels like it's minus two or minus one, one. That's crazy. And what is insane about that is that those are two completely different discs made in the exact same mold out of the exact same plastic. I mean, I feel like as disc golfers, we kind of, we kind of intuitively know this if you pay attention to disc golf manufacturing and different runs of discs and stuff like that, but it's so cool to actually experience the why. But I digress because we also tested a completely different type of plastic. Now at this point we knew that different plastics have different shrink rates, but we still wanted to compare two completely different plastics melted and ran through the machine with the exact same parameters. And this is an ozone, you know it, right there. And this is also an ozone. <laughs> It's so hard to show on camera and I hope you can see it, but these are insanely different. Like when I look at this one, I see an ozone, but when I look at this one, I'm seeing like T-bird maybe, or 
maybe even more stability, I don't know. It's crazy. Okay, that is clearly an extremely different disc. Like those are, literally if you had a flight path chart, it would be like this. And those are the same disc. What? So now I have to figure out where this leaves us. And I didn't really think about this, but saying we have the exact same mold, I think we can say with 100% certainty now that the difference in dome on different runs of discs is either caused by the type of plastic changing or variability in the processing. But I also have a feeling that this is part one of this video because I still have more questions and want to see how, how far we can push the limit. So needless to say, if you have more thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comments below and maybe we'll try to answer some of them or address them in a future video. This video was fascinating to make and will absolutely bear a massive effect on how we make discs moving forward. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you next time. Okay, if you're still here, then you're officially in the deep end and I've got two very interesting things for you. The first is that obviously we tested a bunch of different things and you might remember that the flattest ozone of the same type of plastic was the one that ran for 115 second cycle. We actually tried something else that didn't make the final cut of the video and that's that we were just about to go to lunch. So we did the 115 second and then for the last shot of the 115 second, we actually left one in for 30 minutes. I actually don't even know if this is good for the machine, so I will likely never try this again. But 30 minutes, here's the most interesting thing, came out slightly domier than the 115 second. So I guess there's a breaking point or something where it just doesn't carry the same value. I don't know, but 30 minutes is absolutely crazy. I will say this one probably does have a wider diameter because it was left in there for so long, which also means that technically if we were to send that in for PDJ approval, as opposed to what we initially sent in, then maybe the max allowed weight would be a little more. I've actually heard that's what some companies do, which is super interesting. For the second thing, I've had this question for a long time that I haven't been able to answer, and it wasn't until we started running this test that I think I officially have an answer. When you think about all of the kind of like knockoff brand manufacturers, I'm just gonna use Franklin as an example. I've always looked at their discs and thought, why on earth are they so insanely dumb? Like even for a beginner, this might be too understable, which is ridiculous. And based on this video, I think I finally have the answer. Now to be clear, I don't know, but I have a hypothesis. So why would they design such an understable disc? Well, my hypothesis is that they didn't. Instead, they took your typical starter set understable fairway driver and mocked something up after that, not knowing that the shrink was gonna make it even more understable in the final part. Plus, if you're an injection molding company, then you try to optimize for time. And a quicker cycle time typically means, this isn't a foolproof way to say this, but it typically means you make more money. So if the most significant dome that we were able to achieve was because of how fast we injected it into the machine and then quickly took it out of the mold so it had ample amount of time to cool outside of the mold, then maybe, just maybe, that's why some of these discs are literal super domes. What's doing over there? I'm running an A tier at a course with a very flooded hole this weekend, so I'm currently trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know Kyle Harrigan, that is all you need to know. That's that guy, the man. Mm -hmm.